What we want to do today is begin understanding a model for short run fluctuations in the economy. What we've thought about previously has really been long run. So I've kind of listed out some of the things that we know. We've been talking about the long run economy and we specifically had said we had kind of worked out that we know that only real variables matter in the long run. We were kind of talking about the difference between real variables and nominal variables and we called this right if you remember when we were talking about this we called this the classical said that this is the classical dichotomy that there's a difference in the economy between real variables and nominal variables those nominal variables take into account price levels they take into account money supply right things of that nature but the real variables in the long run we can just compare them because we know that they don't actually that that it's all relative to each other right that the price level in the long run wouldn't necessarily matter and we were able to as a result of that analyze models for real GDP, kind of real uh, real interest rates, real exchange rates, unemployment. We were, able to, we, were, we were able to do that without considering these kind of nominal values here, right? The, kind of the money supply, which I've just uh, kind of abbreviated as M2, or uh, without thinking about the changes in the price level, which I've kind of abbreviated here as uh, inflation, right? CPI as we've thought about it. And this is really also kind of, we've thought about classical dichotomy here and understanding this. This is also really what we've been talking about with money neutrality as well, right? Money, oh, let me undo that here real quick. With money neutrality. And these are very closely intertwined. The fact that there's a real and nominal kind of economy that we think about and that money neutrality that the price level wouldn't matter for real variables in the in the long run. Now what we want to do is we want to think about a short run fluctuations in the economy. We, we want to think about so what it, what are the things that actually move us from the current trajectory? Why do we have recessions? Why do we have excess growth in some years? Why are there some years where we have really high unemployment uh, versus uh, other years where we have really low unemployment, right? Things of that nature. Why do we deviate from our normal trends? And that's really what we're going to be trying to understand here a little bit better. We've got a model for short run fluctuations in the economy. And when we talk about short run, we're typically talking about a couple years, right? A few years here. So I would say between one and three years is what we're generally thinking about. Maybe five years, right? But it, we're talking about the relatively short run when it comes to the full economy. And when we talk about these fluctuations, well, this is a, there's another word that often gets thrown down. If you uh, if you like watch a Bloomberg or or if you read the Wall Street Journal or or watch a CNBC, you you hear this all the time: the business cycle. And the business cycle is just referring to exactly this short run fluctuations in the economy it's it's tied to the business cycle because a lot of the variables within the macro economy tend to move together and so the business cycle right we might see a big fall in investment in the same year that we would see a big fall in uh, kind of real GDP or we would see kind of the inverse relationship where unemployment would really increase when we see a fall in demand some of these things that we just generally have a good feel for just because we see them every right we see it all the time in the economy and so this also comes up and, and it's this is also described as the business cycle what we're really going to be trying to develop here in kind of in economics when we think about it we think about this as the aggregate supply aggregate demand model and what we're going to focus on here is the aggregate demand before we get into that though what I want to think through is just a real right in the short run clearly I guess kind of what we've been saying uh, to summarize this in the short run clearly the money supply, the price levels, these types of changes, these matter in the short run. In the long run, we can, we've come up with a good model that kind of understands that, well, the real variables, that they would only be relative to each other anyway, so, so these types of changes wouldn't really matter because your money, right, if, if the money is, if, if the money, if your, your value of money is cut in half, well, your wealth is, right, everything is kind of cut in half across the board. And so, 
what we want to think through now in the short run is, well, what happens when we introduce fluctuations and changes here? And we know that those would actually matter because we see those, right? In, in, in a period of one to three years, one to four years, a big increase in inflation really would matter, right? We, it, it is something that where we would, it would be kind of going through the economy in different ways. So what I want to list out here real quick is just some of the major inputs uh, of interest to us um, and some of the things that we've really been discussing throughout macroeconomics here. So I'll just put kind of major inputs, major inputs here. And these are the things, right, this is kind of a quick summary of some of the, the main things, some of it's up here that we've been thinking about. So obviously the main one that we think about is output here. And we know the components of output are also pretty important. We've got consumption. Consumption. Here we've got investment as another input. Investment. And this is the investment by firms or by households in residential, uh, right, in residential uh, property. But mostly when we think about investment, we think about uh, the, the investment that firms are making in, in uh, capital, that they're making in, uh, in purchasing factories, right, and things of that nature, and in, in coming up with, uh, with, um, with intellectual property that, that can then be sold, right, that can kind of increase a return on their investment. Uh, we also think about the government's role in this as well. And so when we think about this, this is government, government, right? And we typically think about this as kind of government expenditures on the economy, net government expenditures. And, and then we've got net exports here as well. What we think about is exports minus the imports. There's some other things here that we've been begun discussing, right? And we know that, it, I'll kind of abbreviate as M2. We know that this is the money supply. Generally speaking, we could also think about M0, right, as currency, or M1, just as deposits. M2 would be talking about, just a quick summary here, right, this would be talking about currency. This would be talking about deposits. And this would be talking about savings as well. And, and this is important because we know that the savings, right, this is an important thing because this really gets at loanable funds that we've discussed. And we've talked about these loanable funds and we've talked about kind of how uh, there's really a money multiplier, right? I'll say money multiplier. And that money multiplier really comes into the banking sector as well, that, that the Federal Reserve can create a certain amount of money. But then we, we are able to multiply that because there's a certain amount that the bank must hold in reserves. But then they loan out that money that's really kind of going into the investment side as well. We can think about CPI as well. We can think about inflation. We can think about changes in the price level and inflation. Uh, and if you remember when we've talked about this, we've said CPIU is kind of the main price level that we use in the American economy when we think about price level changes. Uh, we've also talked about unemployment, right? This is one of the major uh, inputs in the economy that we are that we are really interested in. And so uh, I'll kind of abbreviate it as U3, which is the unemployment rate. Unemployment. This is the unemployment rate here, and we know that that is reported by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Uh, they do a survey, right, of households to figure this uh, to figure this number out: the employment rate, uh, the labor force participation rate, and we've thought about those. This is U3, which is kind of our current, or the normal unemployment rate that we think about. We know that we can add in underemployed individuals and part-time workers, right, things like that. And then we can get to other unemployment rates as well. That that would be a larger number, U6 which is sometimes referred to as well. And then we also know, obviously, we've got the interest rate. And the interest rate, it's often abbreviated as R, or we've been abbreviating it as R. And this is really on loanable funds, right? Loanable funds that we've been interested in. And what else do we also have? Well, we've got the exchange rate. And the exchange rate, which we've kind of abbreviated as as E, and we know that the exchange rate. Well, this is really the right. This is kind of the exchange rate for uh, for how much how much of another currency can you purchase with domestic currency. This is really in trade that we've been uh, that we've been interested in this kind of input or in this variable on the macro economy. So, uh, kind of a good summary of what we've been talking about, what we've been thinking about thus far as we go into a short run um, model. And that short run model, we're going to begin here by discussing aggregate demand.